and welcome back to part two of the convoy. This will be about an hour long, which, considering we spent about nine hours from start to end actually doing it, is still the heavily edited version. There are a number of YouTubers with channels about tanks, but not many actually bring you into them, complete with the intercom banter, so I'm going to take a bit of pride in this. If you do find this boring, I won't take offense if the analytics tools tell me that you leave. However, it should give a feel for the casualness of a tank crew out of the line of fire, and a lot of the waiting. And yes, there is a lot of background noise in a tank. Either way, the first thing to do on the day is to get everything out of the hangar and lined up. The Lynx strikes me as sort of the product of an unholy union between an M113 and an M114. Uh, but we have two C1s, uh, one of which, um, sorry, two of which, both of them, are uh, trainer tanks. So when we initially got them, they just had these big iron hulls on the top of them, opposed to uh, actually having a turret with a gun. And that was because uh, they were just used to teach drivers how to actually operate the vehicle, um, opposed to having to, you know, put a big expensive gun on a vehicle that was never to see uh, actual combat. And so since then, we've actually had uh, custom turrets made um, that, uh, you know, look just like the real thing. Most people don't know the difference until we point it out, um, which means <laughs> we, uh, we've got some good people to make it. Um... Last second check of the oil. Well, all good. Make sure the headgear is kept close to hand. And then sort out the cameraman's helmet. That's a big old one. And on with the show. Handy little grab there, isn't it? Alright, it's uh, he wants to do that radio check, so is the uh, master pass not on now, is it? Alright, go ahead and uh, turn it on. Alright. They say to never ever tie your cable. I have had these things disconnect at the most inopportune times. So that is an instruction I tend not to follow.
last one there or less. I'm keeping it handy though, just in case. You know, something I miss about the M1 is that on the M60, there's no stowage bin within easy reach of the commander. So you got to kind of hop out and reach in the back. On the M1, you just kind of reach over to the side, open up the sponsor bin, throw whatever you need in, close the sponsor bin, you're good. Oh well, I guess they learned over time. All right. Preparing to traverse the turret. We're clear right, we're clear left. Power. you there I was showing you. Uh, no, 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 uh, put the camera down, you gotta go down, it's under your seat. Oh, right. Uh, you know where the... Oh yeah, the, the, yeah I'll get the, uh, the power in a moment. Uh, uh, let's, let's make sure he locks the turret first. Lift it up a little bit. There you go. Rotate right. If it doesn't go all the way, keep pressure on it and I'll jiggle the turret a little bit. Alright, stand by. I'll jiggle the turret. Keep pressure on it. Oh, okay. getting some yeah, vehicles out. That, that's fine. a little I'm bit less go of a far. reduction okay. than others. It's going to be a gentle move. Just keep pressure on it while I go one way or the other. Yep. Is it in? There you go. Alright, so uh, that's it. You can put your seat back. Let me kill the turret power here. Does it lock? Elevation power is off. Alright, now. Music. Where is my intercom box? Ah. Aha! They do have an auxiliary input. Woohoo! Alright, let me see if I can hook this up here. Alright, so while I have a couple of minutes, I'm going to uh, do the museum a favor for the rest of their uh, their time they're operating this. And because we're going to be doing a hell of a lot of hanging around waiting, maybe we can get Canadian TV coverage over the intercom system here. So, you take a, an old headset or something like that that you're willing to sacrifice. Uh, in this case, it's courtesy of the airline that I took to get here. And uh, you basically strip off the ends. Fortunately, I do have another uh, another headset that I can use for the flight home. Uh, then you strip down the wires a little bit so that you can actually have something to, to pull in. So give me a. This may take a moment. It's not the best tool for this. Wire strippers are far preferred. Actually, it's working out. Sharp lefts, you know what? 
the uh, the popping feels like if you're about to throw a track? Yeah, I have a rough idea. Alright. Go straight as soon as you hear that. so good we've all made it out of the uh, formation yard and we've made it all of 400 meters and well I mean face it if you can get the, car, the vehicles out of the gate that's 90% of the trouble then you all have to worry about is a breakdown on the route and that's honestly that's likely it took um, yeah, maybe half an hour to get that M3 light going the steward uh, with the radial engine but uh, they persevered and Leo which is the name of the steward is uh, is partaking in the convoy. Poor little guy hasn't run this much in, uh, in quite a while, probably. Well, obviously, it was in the, obviously the parades last year, but if you think about what the history of these vehicles, because that store came out of the Brazilian army, and obviously it was a donation from the US, and uh, it was built in being an M3 in, in the earlier part half of World War II. And that steward has had a lot of miles and seen a lot of places. And here it has ended up in Oshawa. Uh, of course, a lot of these vehicles, the CVRTs, that we're part of a convoy, so our section is the, the Gulf War section, or squadron as they're calling it here. And uh, pretty much most of these vehicles saw service in the Gulf War. And what they did a couple of years ago at this museum was they tracked down by serial number the crewmen of the British vehicles, the CVRTs. And uh, they, they came out, those who could, they came out and they married up with their old vehicles and they, used, and they drove around a little bit. This was at the, uh, the Kino weekend a couple, of ago, a couple of years ago. And that's, uh, that's something you don't see museums do very much every now and then. But, uh, it's, it's cool just to get the entire unit back together again and say, here's your tanks, go at it. See the hacking the intercom Somehow video. I don't think that is ever going to happen with Bradley or Abrams for me any time in the next couple of decades. But, uh, uh, the, the Oshawa Regiment, uh, Oshawa Museum, on the Ontario Regiment Museum, does a lot of very unique things. It's more of a collection than a museum, but what they do is, there's almost nothing like it in the world. So, uh, there you go. Good plug for coming up if you're, if you're ever doing something. That's great. You're stuck in traffic. You're 15 feet above everybody else. And you can even make your own lane. We had... Uh, we were commuting in Iraq, so we were in the M1, and we we're just traveling with everybody else in the traffic. And if there's a jam, we stop. Uh, not for too long, of course. You don't have to stay here for too long. So if you're stuck for one minute, or you just make your own lane. You can do that when you're in a tank. But uh, it is one of the most surreal things, just commuting through traffic in a 70-ton tank. I don't know whether you've noticed this, but most of the CBRTs are uh, signed by x -Men. We're on our way. Yeah, I saw that. All right, prepare to move. We don't need to be too close to them. I strongly doubt somebody's going to sneak in front of a 60-ton tank.
Well, I say that, but in Germany they actually used to do that to get stuck in convoys. And, uh, when the M1 came out with the turbine engine, the jet exhaust, the drivers took a while to learn that that exhaust will melt the bumpers or the paint off your car. Took them a few years. Okay, he's coming. 
there's a police car coming around on our left. something and it's going to be expensive. Uh, that uh, Husky or Cougar or whatever the hell that is, that's not going anywhere right now, so it looks like we're going to be here a few minutes. Got to your front. they don't do this all that often. They didn't think the tank had room. really do accidental curves and since their tracks are so easy to see what's straight in front of them for so far it's not uncommon in the motor pool to put tanks within a couple of inches of each other. It's down to the ground guide trusting the driver and remembering the pivot point on the tracks and that the arse end of the tank swings out on corners.
That said, I had a driver in Iraq who I swear could do this without the aid of ground guide. Seemed to know the corners of the tank to an inch, which wasn't bad, especially considering he was actually an engineer who was transferred to my tank unit for the deployment to make up the numbers. and then waited for an hour. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, we were, we were coming down. Sorry, I gotta stay on the radio. We turned on Stevenson. We saw, all we saw from all the way up to Simcoe Street was just a line of military vehicles. It was epic. This was my thought. And so away we went. Although I did want the ground guide Ken out again, just making sure we weren't going to hit the vehicles with the aforementioned arse end of the tank. in the Canadian forces. I've seen that 
that video, have you? Alright, close enough. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> there is a video of some guy knocking uh, the tank around with his gun tube. Every time they, uh, he was doing maintenance or something like that, every time we got on the back deck, they knock him off again. Alright, onwards.
idea about how to connect even the um, uh, even the more recent events, like in the Afghanistan war or 9/11, how to connect that to the new generation of people, uh, that, because it just isn't a connection anymore. How are we doing for clearance on these people on the right? Oh, you're fine. Okay. You're fine. I'm a little bit off center on the vehicle ahead of us. That, that's uh, we're so much wider. That's okay, it's only a police car. And I'm sure Michael knows his way around. Alright, yeah, you're good. If you had a penny for every time your picture's been taken today, you'd be a millionaire. I would indeed. Police force are not known for drill and ceremony, but in fairness, the fire brigade behind them seemed to be fairly squared away. The ceremony did contain the three volleys.
Niner, Echo Niner, Echo One has rejoined the column. Jesus, we weren't that far behind. Well, this is where they're supposed to stop and drop yeah. off passengers, and also we're supposed to take our flags down. Do you have any tall flags? Yeah, up? let's uh, pull down the antenna here. So we crank this. There you go. Speed things up a bit here.
thing about the M60 is that because they have such a big cupola, they actually have a swing out seat for the TC to sit on. So I'm actually just sitting down quite comfortably, head out. I don't really do that on the M1 very much. Also reduces the cold a little bit. I've normally heard it known as the Autobahn seat, but apparently some folks called it a suicide seat, which I had thought was what the crew evaluators sat on on the turret roof for the days of jump radios. Our CVRT might be on fire. Uh, yeah, he don't look too happy right now and he's smelling. That's Jeremy. Alright, slow down, slow. Uh, okay, thought oh, we signaling us. Now you can really see the smoke. Is it me or is the crew holding their arms out in a stop signal kind of superfluous? I mean, who's really going to try to pull in front of an M60 through tank lengths behind a CDRT? Okay, so let's really pick up the pace for the run home. I see a lot of families on their porches. If they didn't get woken up by the convoy going out, they've had plenty of time and warning to run back. the real estate agent sold them. Yeah, a lot of people complain about the airport. Really? Oh yeah. How long has the airport been here? The airport was built as a pilot training base here in World War II. Well, it looks like they came to the airport, not the airport came to them then. Oh. Some of them would swear that they snuck the airport in over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty quickly, 
I think because we got our we're facing our own door. Although we will be uh, obviously spinning the turret. Well, the gun will go right over top of anything that's already in there, right? So we don't really need to worry about turning it. Well, it's up to you. Do you want to, uh, do you want to be climbing in and out the way you are now, or climbing in and out the... Oh. Echo 1, this is Echo oh. Leader. Please uh, position yourselves behind the wheels of Bravo Squadron. Over. All right, do you want us behind the Leopards? Roger, behind the Leopards. Behind the Leopard. There yes, we sir. go. Do you want me to turn it or not? Yeah, I guess maybe best turn it. Alright. Uh, Tony, do me a favor, grab the uh, turret lock that's inside there that you unlocked earlier, or vice versa. Copy, standby. While he idles. Alright, you'll have to uh, watch for anybody coming up beside us. Yeah, will do. I'm surprised they haven't turned the leopard already. Yeah. Well, they park with their guns for us. Right, turn power on. Okay, I'm down. putting away the vehicles and then off to the wing for food, drink and speeches. To see the people of Oshawa by the sides of the road on a cold winter's morning, I, I, I have no words, I really don't. Uh, you guys, I, I hope other people have told you this as well, you should be proud of what you've done. And uh, the best I can do uh, in return favors, I did two things. One, my U.S. Army flag is now in your collection. Ken has it somewhere. Put it on the Sheridan, not in that Marine Corps thing. <laughs> <laughs> I deliberately picked it to annoy the Marines. <laughs> and the other thing is so I have my own camera crew as well. And so we're going to get an extra video behind the scenes what it was like for me to partake in this event. And so hopefully we will help spread the word of what you people do up here. And that will help you meet uh, the 25,000 a year challenge that you're going for. <laughs> and uh, if we can help with that, then this has been worth it. This has been a great pleasure and a privilege. Thank you very much. That's it. That's what these lads and lasses achieved. Well done. <laughs>